Hello, this is Rob Hopkins, and, and uh, I'd just like to thank you so much for all the wonderful feedback on the first podcast, What If uh, Birdsong Drowned Out the Traffic, with my guests Maya Rose, Craig, and Sam Lee. Uh, it, was a, it was such a joy to make, and uh, next week I'll be posting the Ministry of Imagination episode that I did with them, where I invited them to step into my newly built and rather gorgeous Ministry of Imagination to, to tell me what they would do uh, but anyway, you'll have to wait for that one. But now is the time when I kind of hand this over to you and to say, OK, uh, this show is built around your what if questions and your what if questions that invite the future, uh, that invite us to think about the future in, 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 in different ways. And uh, you may already have a what if question, in which case, please just put it in the comments thread underneath. Uh, and then I'm going to go through them and find the best people to help answer some of them. But I also thought it might be nice to offer a little exercise that I do with groups and I've done this with groups of 10 and I've done this with groups of one and a half thousand in a hall uh, in Belgium. It's an exercise I do that helps us to kind of project ourselves into the future, it helps us to imagine what that future would be like and uh, and I think it always generates much richer, much more kind of juicy what if questions. So you know if, if it's something that's useful to you then then, then let's have a go. So I would invite you to get comfortable and to find yourself uh, sitting in a place where you can, where you feel relaxed. And uh, what we're going to do in a minute is we're going to attempt the first act of online uh, time travel. So this is a fairly historic event here. I hope you uh, appreciate the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the precious nature of this moment. And what, I, what we're going to do when we turn on my time machine that I have just here, just out of uh, screenshot, is that we're going to travel forward 10 years to 2030. And the world that we're going to uh, arrive in is not utopia, but it is a world in which we have done absolutely everything that we could possibly do. Everything that could have been done during those 10 years, that the climate change, the science, the urgency demanded of us, we did with compassion, with focus, with patience, with dedication. It's a future where, um, it's, so like I say, it, 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 it's not paradise, but it is a future where everything we could possibly have done was done. That over that time, there was cascades of positive change that built and multiplied and magnified in a way that in 20 felt, 20 felt completely unimaginable. And people in the future will look back at those extraordinary people between 2020 and 2030 and the bravery and the guts they showed and the imagination and the vision and they sing great songs and tell great stories about what happened during that time when everything was reimagined and rebuilt and there was a huge sense of collective purpose. So I'd like to invite you to close your eyes and what we're going to do in a minute is we're going to turn on our, uh, the time machine. And when we turn on that time machine, we'll be traveling forward uh, to 2030. And when we get there, I would just invite you to take a walk around in that world using your imagination with all of its senses. What does that world that you're in smell like and feel like and sound like? What do you see uh, around you? What's it like to walk down a street? What's the, what does daily life feel like? What are the children doing? Just allow yourself to walk down those streets, to breathe the air, to listen and see what you can hear. Uh, and uh, um, yeah, just to kind of really immerse yourself in that way. OK, so I'm going to turn on my time machine now and then we'll just go forward and spend a couple of minutes uh, with you wandering around uh, in that world.
So keeping your eyes closed, I would just invite you to return to the, to the reality of 2020, but to bring with you and to just think about what are the what if questions that bubble up for you from that. Things that you saw there, things that you experienced there, things that you felt there. What are the what if questions that, that provide a bridge for us? from now in 2020 to thinking forward uh, into that future. So I'm going to leave you with that thought to say, I just sort of sit with it for a while and see what bubbles up in terms of the what if questions that we could explore about how we might build a bridge from where we are in 2020 to that world in 2030. And I really, really look forward to hearing your questions and to reflecting on them going forward and, and this is a process that we will stop and do on a fairly regular basis but uh but for now i uh, thank you for, for for doing that exercise with me i've always found it really a uh, powerful exercise and actually um whenever i've done it with groups either small or large when we do reflections afterwards the key things that often come up pretty much universally are the bird song is so much louder the air smells so much cleaner uh, there's a much stronger sense of purpose and, and, and community endeavour and there are no cars and of course at, at the moment in these days of, of the coronavirus that's not so hard to imagine now as it maybe was two months ago you can almost step outside your door in many places and that's still uh, the experience so um, so I hope you found this uh, a useful exercise do feel free to do it whenever you want to. It's very powerful. A lot of people have said when I've done it, this should be a daily practice. We should be doing this on a daily basis to help to bring, build those kind of uh, memories of the future in terms of where we go from here. But I really look forward to, hear, to seeing your what-if questions and to exploring them further. Thank you so much.